When you're creating a brand identity, how you present your designs to the client can make or break the project. Now, there are tons of great websites you can use to get both free and paid mockups, but sometimes you just can't find what you're looking for. And in those cases, artificial intelligence can be the perfect solution. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom product photography 100% free using an artificial intelligence website. And then we're going to take that photo and turn it into a mockup using Photoshop. So if you're ready to learn, my friend, let's get started. Here we are on this AI artwork website called Lexica. And this website is actually incredibly powerful because it allows you to do two main things. One, of course, it allows you to generate your own custom artwork from a search prompt. So let's say we type in something like Gandalf um, 8K Unreal Engine, just something very simple like that. We click generate. You're going to have to wait a little while. It takes a few seconds. Uh, I would say around like 15, 20 seconds on average. Um, for the most part, as you'll see, I'll fast forward a little bit here, but yeah. All right. So that did, <laughs> that did not give me um, a picture of Gandalf. It actually gave me a picture of some forest looking scenes, but let's go to, um, let's type in portrait of Gandalf 8k unreal engine face and let's click generate again and wait for it all right here we go so as you can see we've generated these uh four images and it generates four images at a time so all four of these images at the top were generated from the same search prompt so as you can see once i click it it shows what prompt I used and it shows these four images as thumbnails um, beneath the currently viewing, viewed picture. And you can click through those and you can download them or you can, you know, update your search prompt. You can go back and update your search prompt. And um, yeah, so this one, I actually really like this second one a lot. But anyway, so this website allows you to generate um, artificial intelligence art. Um, but it also allows you to search artwork. So if we go back to the home page here, right? And as you can see, you have all of these uh, all of these user generated images. Um, when you click on one of these, you'll be able to see the prompt that was used to create them. And you can either generate more images based on this prompt or you can copy the prompt and type it in the search box up here and you can play around with that prompt. So you may want to use a lot of the same keywords, but change up a part of it. Like for example, if I were to click this picture, I really like this picture of this elf lady, right? Say I wanted to change the ethnicity to be, you know, Chinese or Russian, or I wanted to change the hairstyle to be dreadlocks, or, you know, you could play around with any of the keywords, or you may want it in a different art style. You may want it in an anime style, or you may want it in a cartoon style, whatever it is, you can change around some of these key um, keywords in the prompt and then render it again. And so you'll get a totally different result. So um, this website is really powerful because if you see some artwork on here that you like and you want to create artwork in a similar style, you can basically copy that prompt and then just play around with it in order to get some uh, pretty creative results. And again, this this website is currently 100% free. Um, you can create an account in order to save stuff and favorite things and um, just keep a catalog of what you've created and what you've um, favorited. So definitely take advantage while you can. But um, for this, I'm, I'm actually wanting to create some product photography. So I actually have some that I've already created and I'm going to show you the prompt that I use. So these four um, product photography shots were created um, using this prompt up here on the top left where it says product photography of lotion bottle on green leaves. And I'm actually going to be using this for a skincare brand called The Fresh, which was created in response to a design prompt from a, from a brand brief from an a, a, a Instagram channel on page called Brand Brief, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, interestingly enough, right? So I'm actually going to be using the very last picture, this one all the way here on the right. And if I click on that, you see it's just a blank bottle um, 
on a background of leaves and I really liked uh, this photo in particular. And so um, I'm going to use this photo and um, I have a link to this photo in the description down below. So if you want to follow along with the exact same photo that I'll be using, you can just download it there. So um, with that being said, I'm just going to click out of here and I'm going to go into Photoshop and bring up my image here. So um, this is actually the edited version of the image. And um, my top layer has lighting effects. So that's just for a vignette to make the center object pop. Then I have this group with the graphics that are on the bottle with the bottle selection. And uh, let me just go through these one by one. So first I created a little layer to change the hue of the bottle. And then I created another color layer with the blending mode set to multiply. And that's to just control the brightness because I wanted a darker blue. So I just duplicated that layer and changed it to multiply. Um, I also have some blend diff effects, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I just removed some, moved some of that color from the highlights. And um, then I have this uh, graphic from Adobe Illustrator that I imported. And uh, finally, I had this layer to say place your artwork as if someone's going to be using this as a template. But I'm going to delete that. <laughs> so, um, and then in this scene folder down at the bottom, I have... Uh, two things so one i patched out this object that you see right here um i patched that out using the brush tool and then i have this um this color layer set to 10 percent fill and this the blending mode is set to hue and that's just to change the the overall color of this entire scene just a bit to match the brand color so if i would have up the fill to 100 percent you would see that's a, that's the color that's being used just to glue all the colors together. But I didn't want it to be that strong because I wanted to keep the natural color of the leaves and just of the scene um, as a whole. And so um, what I'm also actually noticing, hold on one second. Let me go back to the original image. This is the original image and it actually looks different from the prompt I have here on Lexica. Yeah, you know what? This is different. Let me actually go to my history and let me see. Let me see what I what I did here to create that green bottle. So this is actually the the, the original photo that I generated. And I was wondering for a second. Here's the original photo that I generated. And so we're going to be using that. And um, I'll link that down in the description. All right. So let's get started. Let's hop back into Photoshop and the first thing that I wanted to do is, of course, to just clean up this scene a little bit. Um, if you notice, there's that object right here that I want to clean up. And then there is some stuff around the edge of the bottle right here that we could clean up. But I'm going to leave that for another time just to kind of get to the main part of this uh, main part of this tutorial. And so the first thing we want to do is select this bottle. So I'm going to go to the object selection tool over here and I'm going to turn on the object finder. And I'm going to just wait for it to load. Okay, let's click that to make a selection out of that. And then I'm just going to use that with that object selection tool still selected. Let's deselect object finder since we don't need that anymore. And I just want to select the rest of this bottle. You know what? It's actually being blacked out. So we're going to fake it till we make it. Let's click P for the pen tool and make sure you have the regular pen tool. Sometimes I use the curvature pen tool. And we're just going to clean up this selection. I want to set this to path not shape make sure it's set to path and i'm just going to use the pen tool just to play around with this selection right here and just clean that up i want to remove these parts so click make selection and i want to subtract from selection click ok all right and over here i want to just select the proper left side of the bottle so i'm just going to make it up because you can't actually see where it's supposed to be so we're going to do something like uh, this and just bring that around and click make selection add to selection click ok all right and we just want to clean up this part right here the leaf selected object selection tool hold alt or option on the mac and just draw around it with the lasso to remove that part of the leaf okay and just make sure you include this part of the bottle you know what? i'm realizing i actually don't need the lid of the bottle at all because we're only going to be putting graphics on the body of the bottle so let's completely remove the lid hold alt or option on the mac and just draw around the lid portion of the bottle 
completely remove that. There you go. And with that selected, we are going to create a new group and I'm going to delete all of these effects. We'll recreate them from scratch. I'm going to create a new layer, press Control or Command G to create a group and then go down to here to adjustment layer. Um, not adjustment layers, but right next to that, you'll see this icon, a cylindrical icon with the circle in the middle. Click that to create a layer mask. All right, now we're going to name this group bottle. And inside of it, we're going to create, use adjustment layer, create a solid color. And we're going to get our brand color. So over here in Photoshop, I have my brand color right here. Let's click that eyedropper tool, copy that color, click OK. And let's just bring that over here, Control or Command V. Now let's change the blending mode of this layer to hue. You know what? I actually want my blue color. So let's go back. Excuse me. Let's go back here. I actually want this dark blue color instead. So let's copy that. And let's paste that in here. All right. So this is going to be called the bottle hue. Control or Command J to duplicate that. Change the blending mode to multiply and change this to bottle brightness. All right. Now we're going to double click on the right hand side of that layer where it's blank. Make sure you don't click on the title because you'll just get the select to rename it. But click double click on the right hand side of it right here. But if you're on a Mac, you want to go to layer, layer style, blending options. That'll bring up this dialog right here, but it's the same thing as on the windows. If you double click blending options and what I want to do is under blend if right here, I want to go to underlying layer and let's just move this over a little and I want to remove this from the right hand side of the underlying layer right here. So let's click and drag this and I want it to be more smooth. So let's put that back and hold alt or option on the Mac and click on it again and drag to just get the left side of that slider. And let's just drag it over to until we find something we like, maybe right there. Click OK. All right. And so that works for me for right now for our purposes. I may dial it down just a little bit. Yeah, maybe there. All right. Now the only thing remaining for the bottle itself, create a new layer and I'm going to import my artwork, which I have in a document here. Let's control or command C to copy that and then we're going to paste it right there on that layer, control V, and it's going to ask us how do we want to paste it? I want to paste it as a smart object. The other um, features are really helpful in some circumstances, but in this circumstance, um, smart object is going to work perfectly for me. So let's paste it in, resize it to where we want it. Uh, about right there works for me. I'm going to double click to commit those changes. Now what I want to do is rename this layer to graphic. And then I'm going to go back into blending options and I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I just did. But instead, I want to remove it from the dark parts of the underlying layer. OK, so let's hold all the option on the Mac, click and drag that slider. That'll start to blend away the darker parts to make it seem as if it's less visible where there are shadows on the bottle as if it was actually on the bottle itself. So maybe do something like that and then do the same on the right side. See how we like it there. It maybe a little, not so much on the right hand side, but maybe like that. All right. And now just for some finishing effects, I like to just create a new group and effects. I'm going to call this lighting and let's create a gradient adjustment layer. Change the style to radial and change the preset to black and white. And I want to reverse this. Click OK and change the blending mode to something like uh, screen or color dodge. I personally prefer a color dodge. I'm going to bring the fill way down to maybe 35 percent. That's still a bit much for me. Let's go to 20 percent. Yeah, there we go. Color dodge. I'm going to duplicate this and change the blending mode to something like multiply or color burn. You know, I think color burn will work for me just a little bit less fill, maybe 10 percent fill. And I'm going to rename these layers respectively to burn and dodge. And this is just so that you can control the dark areas and light areas separately instead of doing it in one layer. So if you want to just make this a little brighter, 
you can or if you wanted to make the edges a little darker you can all right and so there you have it so that's basically how i created this um product mock-up and this product photography using artificial intelligence and photoshop so as you can see if you're ever hard pressed to get the type of imagery you actually want for your clients you know sometimes you may want a very specific type of scene or mock-up and you just can't find it on a mock-up website this is a great way to go about that just to create your own map mock-ups from technically scratch and um just create custom presentations for your clients when you're um, showing them their branding. So if you found this video to be helpful, uh, please make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on the bell for notifications so that you don't miss a beat. And again, thank you so much for joining with me. It's been great to uh, spend this time with you, virtually speaking. And um, I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Take care.